All right, Whitney, welcome to the Wank and O'Brien Show. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? We are fine. We saw you in Nashville starting out. Refresh my memory. Where are you from originally? I'm from Scotts Hill, Tennessee. Scotts Hill, Tennessee, a burgeoning metropolis, of course. Yes, the, uh, thriving. How, population of how many? Um, 900, I think, really? last time we checked. 900. Yeah. Where crazy? exactly is it in the state? Um, it's south of Jackson, southeast of Jackson, about okay. 45 miles. All right. about an hour to That get doesn't there. help me much. Where's yeah. Jackson? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, I just it's assumed okay. you know. No. Um, it's two hours to Nashville, two hours to Memphis. It's, it's north, oh, okay. of, it's north in the of the Mississippi middle. line. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, very nice. Yeah. You're very close to two very important towns to the music industry. Yes, I am. So that's good. You, you grew right up, in the middle. Yeah, I grew up uh, singing and playing and all that good stuff? I did. I grew up, um, you know... Uh, from early on, I loved my my granddad was a huge Elvis fan. Oh, really? So really introduced me to that, and and that's really honestly what made me want to sing. So Memphis, you know, we'd go to Graceland, and that's you know I was just mm-hmm. in love with him. And who else did you listen to? Um, loved Jerry Lee Lewis. Was a big fan of Jerry really? Lee Lewis as well. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, and and just loved. My dad was a big rock fan. Loved the Rolling Stones, and and then my mom was a huge country fan. Tanya Tucker, Travis Triet. Okay. You know, so I got both. You know, best of both worlds, and and you know, love them both. And, so, and what just was your lovers, what was your first instrument when you were a kid? Uh, piano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a. I love the guitar much better. I started off in piano and, and took it lessons for like years. It sounds like somebody forced the piano yeah, on you. Yeah, so the 30 uh, minutes. you got to practice 30 minutes a day, and that was 30 minutes of torture for me. Now, yeah. You're a songwriter as well. When did you start writing songs? Around, you know, I, I, I've always been creative and, and writing, but more professionally, obviously, when I got to Nashville and started co-writing with, with some friends there. Yeah. And that really brought it out. Got a publishing deal when I was 17. Mm-hmm. So that's when it, you know, became an everyday, more t- like a job type thing, if you, that's what you can call it. But there, there must be some early songs way back in the back that, that you did when you were young. Do you, oh, do you have any of them? Yeah. Do you, do you remember um, any of them? No, I do not remember <laughs> any of them. Thank goodness, and I hope they will never, ever be found. <laughs> if there, there might be cassettes. I used to, you know, because I would have a little cassette recorder and yeah. stuff. So I hope none of those tapes are ever found. The songs I hope about I got rid of them. <laughs> ponies and rainbows and songs like that, huh? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start playing in uh, public, playing out, and getting paid for it? Uh, and getting paid for it? Uh-huh. Oh, I don't know about that. That's, still working on that? <laughs> I'm, I'm still not there, man. <laughs> no, I mean, I started playing out. I was around six years old when I started. Um, really? I played in church. Okay. Um, out, fairs and festivals, basically anything that I could do. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't get paid for it, obviously. But, um, you know, you would, you'd get in some competitions where the grand prize was $25 or something. Sure. Make me a little cash, but... But that's really it until okay. until I got older. And you so. are correct me uh, if I'm wrong, but are you, you are a, a writer or co-writer of every track on the album. Every track on the record, yeah. Th- that's very really unusual. Sad. Yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't believe it because we did we listened to outside songs. I'm not definitely not opposed to listen to outside songs. I've got so many great songwriter friends that I just I love listening to other people's stuff. Um, but uh, but we ended up with yeah being a co-writer on them all. So now, had you written stuff for other artists as well, or is it mostly just for you? Well, actually, <laughs> I got a Rascal Flatts cut last week. Oh well, That's, last week. Yeah, last week. Now it's not on the record. But cross your fingers okay. that it will make the record. But they did cut it actually. Okay. Wow. Now yeah. what's that call like? <laughs> that I mean, I had no idea because it wasn't on hold. You know, sometimes you get a usually explain it, what that means. Okay. Well, people. Artists will put a song on hold or someone, like their producer or them themselves or somebody that's listening to songs from They'll put it on hold, which means you can't pitch it to other artists. They want to keep it for themselves until they get to hear it. It's kind of like optioning a script in Hollywood. Right, okay, yes. Okay, I get and it. And so um, there was no hold on it. Someone uh-huh. just pitched it to them, and they cut it that same week. And so I got the call telling me that they had cut a song. I'm like, well, really? Because I wasn't even Hadn't aware heard anything that, about it, yeah. Yeah, I haven't. So, which was awesome. That was a great feeling. And I've got a new song on Leanne Womack's new um, record come out. Wow. Yeah. Well, so, I thought we were getting the first single, but we got bumped. So, <laughs> hopefully, we'll still have a single. But you know what? If not, I'm just happy I can say Leanne Womack has sang one of my songs. Sure. Yeah. So, she's great. Whitney Duncan, thank you. Thank you so much.